This is Thayan Smy here to talk about your Chicago Bears and the recent extension that we've done with Cole Komet. Uh, just to start out, uh, yesterday, news came out about Ryan Poles recently giving out an extension to Cole Komet about 20 minutes before training camp practice had started. Uh, we're looking at about a four-year, $50 million tr uh, contract, looking at about 13.2 AAV, which is uh, annual actual value of the contract itself, uh, which ranks about ninth in the league so far right we now. We love so our acronyms here on Thayan Smy. <laughs> that AAV flowing, dude. No, keep going. I, I'm of liking course. this. Um, so I uh, came in top 10 contract in the league for tight ends right now. Um, don't know if a lot of people would put him in the top 10. I personally would. He's a very good uh, U tight end. He blocks very well, as well as can catch the football, which a lot of the tight ends that are in the top 10 right now with AAV, they're more wide tight ends. They're just out there to kind of run routes, catch the ball, uh, get up the seam, and kind of create that separation. Um, but fun fact about Coco he's number four in the league with separation right now, which is actually mind-boggling to think about. What is that metric? What is that is. metric like? Uh, how is that measured? Just like by the time he caught the ball, where the closest yeah. defender was. Yes, the separation that he created between him and the uh, defender when he catches the ball. It almost feels like he's able to like use his massive body to like get that going as well. Um, yeah, I was he actually, is, yeah, he's just a freaky good athlete, and I don't want to you know write off your coattails right here, Nick. But um, in the press conference, Cole Komet had mentioned that exactly he is trying to be the best version of whatever he is asked to be that day or needs to be. He said, so he said, right. if the game plan, I got to run 40 times the game, I'm blocking game plan. Got to throw the ball 40 times in a row. Um, I'm going to be catching. So right. he's a very team player. And I think above all else, just the mindset and his mentality and his professionalism is why he earned this money. Um, but yeah, I, I think that he's a great signing. Nonetheless, Nick continue, please. Yeah, I mean, this is a great signing for us. It's nice to bring a hometown kid back um, on an extension, which I feel like I haven't seen in a very long time. Somebody that we have particularly brought in. I know this regime isn't the one that drafted him, but to see a player that we had brought in um, and actually earn an extension and really earn an extension. I mean, just to go back over his few stats of his years, uh, just to go back over the years and look at his stats, uh, his rookie year had 28 uh, receptions for 243 yards with two touchdowns. 2021, he had a little bit of a drop off, not in yardage wise, uh, he actually had a big step up in yardage wise going to 60 catches for 612 yards, but zero touchdowns that entire year. So that was kind of hard to kind of look at that. And a lot of people were saying, oh, Cole Clement might be a bust. He's not looking as well as we thought he was going to be. Coming into this year, he put up 50 receptions. So a little bit on downturn, 10 less receptions, uh, 544 yards, which he actually averaged out more this year with his uh, catches and his yards. He, actually, he averaged about 10.9 uh, yards per catch, which is up from 10.2 the year before and actually had seven touchdowns this year, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, was tied for fourth best in the league, third, uh, either third or fourth best in the league among, among all tight ends. So that's, that's, almost like, that's almost like one-tenth of his catches were touchdowns. Right, exactly. That's and awesome. That's, that's insane to think about. Um, a lot. I think two games he had two touchdowns, or was it one game that he had two touchdowns? But I believe over a stretch of five or six games, he racked up those seven touchdowns, which is absolutely insane to think about how he never was really involved in the offense for the first few weeks because they were kind of trying to get that running game going. I know they were trying to ramp up the passing, but with the offensive line, the way that it was working, we didn't really have much of a passing game because we didn't have a lot of protection within the first few weeks. So once we hit that uh, that Patriots game for that Monday, was that Thursday night football or Monday night football? I think it was Monday night. Um, Monday night football. We had a little bit of a mini buy. We ended up retooling the, the offense, obviously, and uh, we ended up working the tight end in more, which is actually where Luke Etsy has come from with the Green Bay. They use their tight end very, very, very much. Like he, The tight end is their sole almost centerpiece of the offense it's kind of like their engine for them obviously outside of the quarterback and obviously outside of them having Devontae Adams it, that did help but um having Cole Komet now on an extension and it's it's going to be great I mean he even said that it's nice to be able to get into practice and now not only focus on what's ahead but focus on day to day and get better as the day goes on because he did say that before he got this extension he kept thinking about oh man this extension this extension and it was kind of weighing on him. So it's nice to see that he gets that weight lifted off of his shoulders and he gets a little breath of fresh air. And he's able to go out there and put in the work and not only now put in the work, but show that he does earn that contract within the next uh, four years that he's on con under contract. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the exact term that Komet used was uh, go out and prove that he's worth more than the contract he gave. And now he gets right. to focus on what's important, which is what exactly right. what you love to hear. Um, as far as the money, the player, I simply have no complaints. Um, if he's going to be the first extension that they give, I'm hoping that there's another one soon to follow. Um, it feels like that would be Jalen Johnson because 
it kind of be a bit premature to give an injured or a Mooney coming off of an injury an extension and maybe even like a Claypool. He had a, a down year. So unless you're able to strike a deal for a lot less money than maybe what he think he might be worth. Um, right. I don't know what they're going to end up doing. And I've hear I've heard rumors, speculation from people who are more involved with the bears than we are that, uh, they could just see the, the, the bears rather letting Jalen Johnson walk. Um, I just watched the press conference for polls today and someone asked about Johnson, you know, what is the, um, the relationship looking like? And he kind of made it seem like he's happy that Johnson is actually at camp and giving it a go. But then polls went on to say that, um, he's still looking for Johnson to improve and become the player that he either thinks he is or wants to be one of those two terms. And then he cut it off really abruptly. So it feels a little bit awkward if I'm being honest. Um, yeah. And even though he wasn't there for OTAs for a justified reason, <clears throat> it's still something to note because um, everyone else has been there, to my understanding. Um, other than that, obviously, we've got training camp finally started. Last Friday, the rookies reported, and then early this week, the actual veterans had started. And yesterday, Monday, no, 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 Monday, not yesterday. I'm sorry. Today is technically a Thursday. So was it actually Tuesday then? Because this is day two right now that we're mm -hmm. recording would be day two of training camp. Yeah. Um, day Tuesday one was the 25th. Yeah. So Tuesday was the first day, which was not out to the public. It was indoors. And the second day today, or yesterday, wow, my days are really bad. Wednesday, they had another practice, I think. I think it's either day two or day three of practice, man. But either way, um, the common theme so far has been the offense and the wide receivers doing some really, really good stuff. So right. there's been these highlight videos that uh, the Bears media is so graciously nice to put out on the social media platform, current, or previously known as Twitter. They are uh, getting some nice clips of Fields to Moore. And uh, for a connection that's only really known each other for five months, they look really good, really solid. Yeah. A lot of good stuff to see there and you can only hope that the sky is the limit there's also been some breakout videos regarding um the last name is crookshank i don't know the first name and i don't know where he came from You're i right. think i think that he was uh was he an undrafted player or was he yeah, a player undrafted. from like xfl no he's an undrafted free agent he came out of uh, Rutgers, if i'm not mistaken interesting okay and maybe there was something that happened as far as like a supplemental draft and he didn't go and that was news as well um but the moral of the story here is that the bears could have found a diamond in the rough if you remember rodney adams from a few years ago it feels yeah. like his story is going to be really similar uh the preseason is going to be huge for these a lot of these guys and he had this awesome catch where it was essentially one arm over the shoulder back of the end zone perfectly caught definitely was a touchdown and if he did that in a real nfl game that would be a, a highlight to remember um and then today, the most recent camp uh, video on of camp, um, it was Tyler Scott. He showed the afterburners, and he blew by someone. It felt like Stevenson again. But he had a yeah. really nice over-the-shoulder catch. Fields hit him in stride. It looked like, I'm assuming that was Fields who threw the football. Um, yep. But again, moral of the story here is that the offense so far is high-flying and looks real good. Um, I know that uh, someone said that the contract extension for Cole Komet really um, – interjected some energy into the locker room and you can only hope that mm -hmm. good things are going to follow nick what have you seen what have you heard from last few days of training camp um and what are you even looking forward to um i'm honestly looking forward to the dj Moore connection um just to kind of backpedal on that too it i love that they're they're building that chemistry that's great that's perfect to do right now in training camp get as many reps in and as many throws as you can but the ball cannot always go to dj Moore because i'm kind of only seeing that a lot of the balls are going to dj Moore. Now I know that we're not getting, you know, the full, the full picture of uh, training camp because we're only allowed to see so much and media is only allowed to release so much. Um, so, but I mean, I would love to see polls kind of spread the wealth around a little bit more. I know that Claypool's getting involved a little bit now that he got pulled off of Pup, which was an odd situation there being put on Pup, taken off Pup. Um, and Adarno Mooney's now cutting, running routes, which is awesome to see. Um, it's, it's going to be an interesting year for the offense. It's going to be interesting to see if we can kind of get things flowing and get the engine uh, going and get the, uh, the Pistons going. Um, I lo I'm loving what I'm seeing from Tyler Scott from the tweets that I have been seeing from a lot of the people who are able to attend the training camp is that his speed is something you can't even put into words. Um, he's blown by every defender that he's playing against on the, on the, on the uh, second team. I'm not sure if he's getting, getting uh, uh, first team reps. But um, from what I've been seeing, he's blowing everybody out of the water. And that's also what I'm seeing from DJ Moore, too, is that not a single DB can guard him. 
Um, yeah, in the past, we've talked about this. Are the OGs of the channel, if there are any at this point, obviously. Um, we had a video, we talked about this, where Tyler Scott was drafted, and uh, we got Ryan Poles' feedback. The thing that Ryan Poles said that he loved about Tyler Scott was this extremely unique ability to increase his speed the further he got down the field. It's very yeah. obvious maybe you start as fast as you can or accelerate to your maximum and slow down because of um, making a cut, simply you're low on energy, whatever it is. But... As you go down the field, if Tyler Scott could increase his speed, that would make him a premier deep threat uh, option. And to piggyback Definitely. off of what I mentioned with um, Darnell Mooney, if he's not 100,000% good to go off of that injury, Claypool shows that he's worth that pick that you traded for him. And Tyler Scott proves that he is you know belongs in this league. I've heard people compare uh, Tyler Scott to the late, not late, but the great uh, Johnny Knox. Obviously, yeah. you know what happened with his injury, so that's where my head was at. But uh, if he can tr- prove to be anything like that, it might be time to say goodbye to Mr. Darnell Mooney. Um, I don't want them to. Obviously, you want to keep everyone. But um, I heard this on the radio about the good baseball teams. I think they were talking about the Dodgers and the Houston Astros. Something that those two franchises do awesome are draft and develop. And on top of that, they do they aren't scared to let top talent walk. So if there's someone who deserves a lot of money, but only because of a circumstance where they're not the best player, you know, you don't want to be playing Darnell Mooney $20 million a year to be your second wide receiver. Right. That, that simply can't happen. If he's going to take a more team-friendly deal to be your third, or if he proves to be a very good number two and takes, again, another team-friendly deal for more money, so be it. But if it's a, you know, you can't be in that limbo situation. If Dar- if uh, Jalen Johnson wants to get paid as a number one cornerback, but he comes out and doesn't have a turnover again this year, or only has one or two turnovers, I don't know if you're going to get that uh, Trayvon Diggs deal where you're getting a, a boatload of cash. Um, yeah, that was insane. The NFL is valuing the turnovers, or at least the Cowboys are. Um, and uh, Trayvon Diggs got a very big contract. Even though he's known to give up a lot of yards, he's also giving the ball back to his offense. And if you have a good offense, sometimes the bend don't break mentality, like the Bears did in 2005, 2006, that mentality works. So I hope – I like Jalen Johnson a lot. I think that he's an awesome player. I think that he's great at tackling, and I hope that he can produce the turnovers, whether they're fumbles, interceptions, I don't care. Produce some turnovers, give the man some money, and let's uh, let's keep the band all together, so to speak. Um, Nick, again, any kind of closing thoughts here? Anything that you've seen, heard, like about training camp so far? Yeah, just kind of pull up. uh, We talked about what uh, happened with Ryan Poles, and uh, Mm -hmm. I think somebody saying something about the locker room. I actually Mm -hmm. have the quote here, too, as well. Um, a player had come up to Ryan Poles and said, you said a ton of energy through the locker room because you guys are taking care of the guys in there. That's, that's amazing to see. I mean, when's the last time we've seen a regime that we've had get this much praise? I mean, outside of the Claypool, yeah, well, I mean, getting obviously Nagy getting coach of the year. And I think pace won executive of the year in the same year, if I'm not mistaken. Right. I don't know Making about that, that one. That maybe, maybe that, that, that's what I was just going to say was the energy in the locker room was right. If you're trading two first round picks for a Mac, you're telling the team, we are going to try and win right now. So that's the right. last time that I've had this vibe. Yeah. Um, but I mean, th- this just feels different to me. I mean, this feels different because polls didn't yeah, sure make a does. trade for somebody. He didn't try to bring somebody in here. He paid one of our players and that fired every single person in the locker room up because they understand that if you do what you if you do what you uh, need to do and work your fucking ass off, you're gonna get paid. You're gonna get you're gonna get paid. He's gonna take care of you, um, and that's awesome to see. Uh, obviously, I know that polls is gonna have a number when it comes to specific players. We've seen that with David Montgomery, um, with him not paying him uh, the six million that he earned uh, earned from Detroit. Um, but I mean, it's it's riveting to see that we have a locker room really respect and kind of look up to the regime that we have and that it's in place right now. Um, it's, it feels different. I mean, this year, this year in the future just feels different for the bears. It feels like they're, we're, we're working on something. We're building something that is uh, going to pay off for us eventually. And um, hopefully darn our right comes out and looks how he's supposed to be like he did in college. I know that uh, a couple of the uh, reports coming out is that he's not looking as well as he, as he should be. Um, but pads aren't on. It's hard to block a defender when you don't have any pads to grab onto and kind of uh, hoist them up with. So I'm not really worried about Darnell Wright. Uh, I even seen that Lewis Riddick was on, uh, I think, Waddle and Sylvie talking about how that he thinks that Darnell Wright is a for sure all pro, first team all pro uh, tackle, uh, which is high praise from Lewis Riddick. I know that he's uh, very uh, intertwined with the NFL right now. Um, I think he had a general manager stint not too long ago, but 
Um, he knows what he's talking about. He even had the Bears going down all right before the draft even happened. Um, and obviously, that's what happened. Um, it's uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be really exciting. And I mean, even TJ Edwards came out and said how it's, how uh, intriguing Fields is, the way he puts the ball, the way he can put it, the way he throws, um, that just how fired up he gets the entire team and especially the offense. Um, and I don't know if you've seen, but Danny and Tomlinson actually came out and said something about the uh, top 100 list. Did you see about that on Twitter? I or sure X? did. I sure did. Yeah. If you uh, if you want to give the ro- lowdown, you absolutely can. But I'll I'll just say this that I'm glad that Ladanian Tomlinson has that mindset because I agree with him. I agree too. Um, Ladanian Tomlinson, pretty much. If you haven't seen it, Ladanian Tomlinson was on. I'm not sure was it ESPN or NFL something? Network. NFL Network. He was on there talking about the top 100 list that came out and how. Trevor Lawrence was ranked 96, and uh, Justin Fields was ranked 86. First of all, I've seen a lot of people online talking about how that it, that doesn't seem realistic. I think it does. A lot of people, I, I would go towards the the saying that a lot of people in the league would fear Justin Fields more than they would fear Trevor Lawrence because Fields has that dual threat ability. Um, he can throw the ball just like uh, just like any other quarterback in the league, and he has something that not a lot of other quarterbacks have in the league, and he has his legs that he can use. Um, but Ladanian Thomas, and kind of going back to that, Ladanian Thomas came out and said that he truthfully believes that that's the correct positioning for where uh, he had Lawrence and Fields. Um, what Fields can do with his legs is something Trevor will never be able to do, but Fields can throw the ball just like Trevor can throw the ball. And I know that we didn't really see it that much because we didn't throw the ball a lot last year. I mean, I think if uh, I think Fields had 17 or 18 pass attempts per game, and I think Lawrence is at like 28 or 29 attempts per game or something like that uh, up in that range, um, give the kid a chance and he can wow you with his arm. He has one of the best TD inter- to interception ratios that has ever played in the game of college. I think he has uh, 40, what was it, 40 or 63 to 9, a 63 to 6 TD interception ratio throughout his entire career at uh, Ohio State. Um, that's not easy to do. That's hard. That's, that's extremely hard. Um, so it's going to be exciting to see what he can do with his arm this year. It's going to be exciting to see that he finally has a number one, a number one weapon. I mean, all you hear out of the, the buzz out of Chicago right now is that DJ Moore is lighting up the field with Justin Fields. Um, I know I for sure coming into fantasy soon. I'm going to probably be taking Fields with my second or third pick because I know he's probably going to be gone very, very soon. I think he's ranked as like the number five or number six uh, fantasy quarterback right now. Um, I think things are looking up right now. I mean, this is an exciting time to be a Chicago Bears fan. Yeah, definitely. There's so much to agree with what you just said. Um, fantasy, I'm hoping that I'm going to be in the same league as Nick. This would be my first year talking fan or doing fantasy, um, and hopefully it's something that we can talk about on the channel. I always thought, Nick, just real quick, I thought that um, you were obviously going to be taking a running back with the first pick that you have, the best running back available, and then I thought that the strat was either to go um, another, not another running back, but probably like the best wide receiver, especially if you could yeah. get like a Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson's yeah. going to go in the first round. That's why I said maybe the second or third pick. I mean, quarterback's going to have to go at some point. I just don't want anybody, at least me, I'm a homer when it comes to fantasy. I like to put bears on my team. That's because, not good because I'm going to be the same way. So I'm going to be uh, hate <laughs> drafting you, so to speak. But yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm going to cut it short real quick just because there's so much that you said, and I, I agree with it. Um, Ladini Tomlinson, uh, he made the great point again that uh, Lawrence doesn't have the running ability. And while Lawrence probably is a better thrower, it's not by much. And it's not to say that Fields doesn't have the ability to do so. It's just based around the uh, the weapons, the available weapons right. that uh, Lawrence had last year, which that GM spending a boatload of cash. Now the Bears finally loaded up and have a really good supporting cast, um, or at least right. a lot better than last year on paper. Um, and then you also mentioned the... You didn't mention the hits philosophy, but my point is is that the hits philosophy is only going to work if it's enforced each and every step of the way. So instead of trying to cut corners and spend a little extra cash in free agency and go, you know, again, cutting corners as far as the Bears front office, they're doing everything correctly. They're trying to build through the draft, take care of the players like you just saw with Cole come at their homegrown talent. And uh, if you're going to work your ass off, like Nick said, and do the correct thing, you're going to get compensated. And that's a really good vibe to put out there and hopefully – we continue to see more of that. Um, guys, I think that's going to cut it for the episode today. A little bit longer than we wanted to, but we appreciate all the recent views that our videos have gotten. We got great, great Absolutely. views. Uh, yeah. we, we, what Nick and I talk about, we like to do uh, a little bit of punching above our weight. So even though we've only got 50 subs or so on the channel, we're always getting m- many more views than that, and that's awesome. But if you want to pay it forward, if you want to help us with our content in the future, leave a like. We really like comments. Nick and I will both respond to your comments. And we want to interact with the viewers. That's the first and foremost thing. This channel has been predicated, ideally, on interacting with the viewers. And one day, we hope to get back to making live content. It simply isn't worth anyone's time if no one's watching it. Um, We had a live podcast.
podcast on YouTube that didn't get too many views in the replay, but the actual video that we produced on there did just fine. So, if you guys like the video, please leave a like. Subscribe if you'd like to. If you dislike the video, fine. Tell us you dislike the video, that's fine. Leave a comment. Let us know what you'd like to see from us, what you'd prefer. Let us know what you want us to talk about. We'd be happy to respond to your comments live on the video. Do whatever we got to do. It's, it's, again, at the end of the day, we appreciate the Bears community. There's so many great content creators. We want to just add to the discussion and formulate a discussion with you guys. Um, thank you guys so much for watching in any event. And until next time, bear down. Bear down, boys. Leave any, leave any questions you guys have. We'll definitely answer them in the next video. Absolutely. Appreciate it, guys. Peace out, everyone.